to my kitchen. Welcome to the kitchen of the amazing Lisa Chernick as well. So excited to see you all here and uh, can't wait to share the amazingness that is Lisa Chernick uh, with you all. If you have not met her before, um, ha happy Happy Wednesday uh, from my kitchen to yours. Um, Lisa and I have been dear, dear friends uh, since days, days long ago back in Weight Watchers when we sat in cubicles quite close to one another, developing content for uh, their magazines and cookbooks and all the rest. Um, you've gone on to do many, many other things, but that is uh, the genesis of where we began our relationship and uh, have had so much fun together. And Lisa is endlessly talented, and we try to get her here developing recipes that are uh, unique and uh, easy, right? Because everything at Target 100 is supposed to be simple. So we try to do easy things that you can then take into your life and also then kind of manipulate in different ways. So Lisa's going to teach you so many things. So thank you for being here tonight with us, Lisa. I'm so happy to be here. Hey, I'm still letting them in. I'm everybody's kind of loading in on us here. So we'll give them a second. You want to share anything else about your just about uh, your um, you know, what you've developed tonight and all of the things that you were thinking about? Because yeah. guys also understand that Lisa has taken Target 100, is living the Target 100 lifestyle. So when she develops these recipes, it's really from a place of understanding and knowing uh, what we what we are all trying to do here. So yeah. Lisa. Yay. Um, well, and, and actually, and to add to that, Liz, I feel like the things that I develop are things that I really want to eat. And I think people really enjoy eating. I want to make them if someone comes over. It's like, these are things that I want to put out there um, in my, like, they're in my real life and they're very much Target 100 style recipes and they're easy and they're kind of just, I don't know. They're, they're also kind of a fun um, twist sometimes on things. This batch in particular, I felt very inspired by the idea of like wanting something new and fresh beginnings and getting excited about, you know, finally the cold weather maybe is going to go away. I don't know, but like, it feels like it's maybe going to really be warm. And I just like wanted to kind of run with that. And I wanted things that felt fresh and, and bright and kind of fun. Um, and that's how this pesto kind of thing got into my mind because I'm, I was thinking not just pesto, the basil um, classic pesto that people think of, but also I was thinking about just this idea that you can really use the concept of pesto, which is just some fresh things put together in the right proportions. And you could make this like deliciousness that you could put on whatever, you could put it on palmini, which is like my favorite, I always do that. Um, you could just like put it on uh, chicken. You could Wait, put- Wait, I'm gonna back you up for a second. What did you say? Palmini? Palmini. You know Palmini. I don't. don't. Oh, hold on. I'm, I know. I see a lot of, okay. I see thumbs up and I see a lot of people saying, no, I don't know what it is. I don't. I don't. So um, I'm. I, let's put it in the chat. Do you know what it is or do you not know what it is? I want to hear from you all. Well, this, is, essentially, it, so. this is the, this this is is the spotlight, Great Joe's so. version, right? Oh, sure. Hearts of Palm Pasta. Got yes. you. But the brand that I like the most is is Palmini itself. Now this is mashed. I haven't tried this one. It just caught my eye. I was like, well, let's see what it tastes like. Usually I have the linguine version, but this brand is just my favorite. So I always think of it as Palmini. Um, I love it. And I make it like alongside, you know, if I make meatballs or if I make like sort of like a riff on chicken parm or anything, I just put Palmini on the side because it's like the pasta and the vegetable in like one kind of thing. Um, so that's what I always do. And then, so these pestos I was envisioning being like very palmini friendly, but then oh. also like a, like protein accompaniment friendly. And the first one I'm going to talk about, I made earlier today and I actually started putting it on all of my lunch reps and all of my lunch, like dips and crackery things and all my little low carby things that I like to eat. I was wanting that. It was it's so yummy. So that it's just like this. I don't know, catch all. And it's especially nice just to keep it in the fridge and just be able to kind of make something just taste like, wow, 
And it's just all concentrated in one, you know, and, and I'm gonna show you guys, um, in like one thing that you've you've made ahead of time. Amazing. Sure. Amazing. So just for those of you guys who are tuning in, you know direct you guys are um tuning in who are Target 100 members and you're here all the time and you know Lisa very well. And then there are some of you guys who don't know Lisa as well and are just coming to know Target 100, the, you know, and and so my my ask of Lisa this time yeah. through, yeah. Was, can yeah. we- yeah. Can Just we drain out? them and put that on, yeah. Sorry, I'm gonna see if I can mute everyone here. Um, I, I tried to ask uh, Lisa to um, envision some stuff that would be really great for spring, because I find that when people are trying to lose weight, sometimes they get stuck. They get stuck in their um, they get stuck in their routines that are winterized, right? They get are eating things that are kind of wintry foods, and they forget to make that rotation into spring vegetables, into springy foods. So we started chatting and she thought, wow, let's do some pestos and, and use those for things that are really fresh and delicious. And let's show you guys a template for how to make a pesto using a bunch of of different, you know, you can, you can sort of like our epic worksheets at Target 100. It's not like you're just going to be able to make one pesto. She's going to teach you the template to make any pesto. And then we're going to make a crustless quiche. So Lisa's kind of going to run this show here. She's so awesome at what she does, but I just want to give you a background of what to expect tonight. Um, for my friends at Target 100, the recipes have all been posted for you, uh, including sort of that template for a pesto and some of her template templates for, um, you know, how to kind of make this crossless quiche any way you want to. So uh, I'm going to let you kind of take it away, uh, my friend. I'm going to spotlight you. So pesto, pesto, pesto. We're going to do pesto first. So, so we're going to start there. And I feel like uh, I, when, when we first started talking, like everybody kind of envisions the green pesto, the basil, you know, uh, garlic, parm, pine nut, and it's amazing. And there's, there, it's like the best. I love that. And I make that one a lot, but I started wanting to kind of riff on it. And I started wanting to pull things that were fresh and that were going to be coming into the garden now, but then we're going to like get even that much more like, you know, abundant as the summer rolled on and, you know, things like, if you grow herbs out in a garden, like mint goes crazy. And I, I do parsley and this parsley mint pistachio pesto, just like, I was like, this is, this is one that is just so beautiful. And it might not be a combo that would necessarily like come right to mind, but it's worth it. It's totally like delicious and amazing. And then that kind of gets your mind thinking like, okay, wait a minute. So really we're just talking about putting together these kind of components, like a formula, and putting it in the food processor or the blender, or if you want to go super old school, I do have a mortar and pestle, I I, which is an amazing thing, but it would take forever. It's a little mortar and pestle, so we're not, but you could, because pesto really means the pestle. That's really where the name comes from. So you're so the, the grinding it, you know, together in that way. Um, so anyway, it's, a, it's good for, for, for the bicep muscles. It's a good exactly. one. Yeah. Exactly. But you have to get one that's pretty big or else you're going to be there for like, for the day. Um, good. So, so mint pistachio. Yeah, the mint pistachio is the one that um, I thought we could make together. But before we do that, I made that first one that I showed you. And I just want to give you guys a, a little um, kind of idea of what went into this because it doesn't look like a regular pesto, as you can see. It's kind of, it's red, it's tomato based. And this is like when all those cherry tomatoes start coming like crazy in the summer, um, or you just like see those beautiful little tomatoes at the store, that you can make that that's what this is made out of um and i will share that one afterwards this this is a one that just kind of came to me and i just decided to make it so I, it's like an add-on for today but basically this one is just the tomatoes um i'm going to just tell you what i put in there and then i'm going to make the one that that we're we're doing together but that one and it's also called um trapanese it's from trapani which is part of sicily and it's just an unusual pesto because of the tomatoes. Basically it's, oh, and the other thing that's interesting, you don't always have to use the nuts. You can sometimes change that up and use a nut butter, which is what I did here. I used cashew butter um, and it gave it this really beautiful kind of like softness and richness that was wonderful. So I did a quarter, a quarter cup of this and a quarter cup of olive oil. Um, and it's just, it's just really nice. And you could also do it with 
almond butter. You could really do it with any butter if you want that smoothness, or you could do it with the nuts and you get that more kind of textural thing. And then you probably add a little more olive oil as per, as per the formula. Um, so that I, was just something that I just got very excited about it because it's as pesto-y as, as any pesto, but it's tomato base and that beautiful rich softness from the cashew butter. And then at the end, you're putting in the grated Parmigiano Reggiano and it's just fantastic. So yeah, wow. I'm gonna wow. share that when we're afterwards. I'll give you a little recipe for that one. Oh, and just these little tomatoes. You can, everybody knows these. Um, yeah. Any, you know, just it's this many tomatoes and then you just kind of go from there and a little basil and it's easy and delicious. So yes, um, another thing I want to say, this one, this one has a little bit of fresh basil and the herbs that generally that, that we buy or, you know, however we're going to sort of prep uh, for something, they're in the fridge because they need to stay cool and like a little damp paper towel. Like here, here are the herbs we're going to use in the, in the one that we're going to make. We have mint, we have some parsley, but I just thought it would be interesting because I think most people sort of assume that all the all the herbs are equally fine to put into the fridge. But in actual fact, this is really wilted now because I, I put it in the water earlier. Basil is much better not in the fridge. It gets that sort of brownish kind of bruised color to it really yeah. easily. So don't put it in the fridge, put it in a little glass of water and just leave it like that until you're ready to use it, room temp. And then awesome. it'll stay nice. I mean, this one's been, I put this a million hours ago and it was, it didn't have long stems either, but just that's my tip on, on basil. So I was Thank like, you. good tip. Um, so, okay. So here we are with some of the, some of the ingredients. I'm going to show you my little tray, a little tray of all the stuff that's going to go into this pesto, right? Um, we have pistachios and these are toasted, just Trader Joe's, easy peasy, whatever. They're ready to roll. Um, and we have fresh parsley. It's a cup, a packed cup of fresh parsley and mint. And this is what a packed cup looks like when you transfer it into a little bowl. It's like bigger than you might imagine. Although eh, maybe not. Um, we're also gonna put in a little bit of um, lemon zest and juice, a garlic clove. And I like using the uh, microplane to do it. That's like really just such an easy way to get the garlic nicely, you know, fine. You're not gonna get a chunk of garlic in your mouth. Um, and then an olive oil. This one's really nice. I like this one, um, but any any olive oil, you can use whatever one you like. Um, and yeah, salt, pepper. And then at the end, the other thing about pesto that I think sometimes people don't realize is that if you leave the cheese till the end, it's actually a better result than just putting it in and, and letting it go round and round in the food processor. It's like, once you're done, you put the pesto in the bowl and then you stir your cheese in. It's just a better result. It's just a minor, Ooh. it makes a difference, right? Another um, great tip, another great tip. Okay, wait for the, basil doesn't go in the fridge and wait to put the cheese in till the end. These are very important pieces of information. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> stir it in, stir it in, right? Yeah. Um, so, okay, so I'm just gonna just put these things in and I'll basically like you you could do, um, oh, the other thing is I mentioned on the, uh, in, in the little recipe, no stems. And that's more important for things like basil if you're using it or this mint, the stemmy bits would just be terrible. Um, but it's less of a big deal if you have something like parsley and it has, has very, um, you know, little sort of thin gentle stems. If they're, if they're in there, that, that's not, a big deal. That's fine. Um, so, uh, so yes, why don't we start with, oh, and the other thing is the olive oil goes in gradually too, but most of the other stuff, here's my, sir. Oh, right. I'm going to put, move my camera so you guys can see me a little bit better. See what I'm doing anyway. Um, hopefully that's, is that good? Can you see it? Yeah, okay. that's great. That's okay. great. So, I'm going, you know, we always take this moment at Target 100 to to fantasize about the day that we're actually filming in a real studio and doing cooking shows and having amazing live audience. Yes, just we will all talk about the days when we were tilting our Zoom cameras down uh, and, and, <laughs> and spotlighting Lisa for everyone to see. But yes. But in any case, OK, so I'm putting it in. I didn't want to I wanted it to be locked in so it wouldn't go all over the place afterwards. Putting in the herbs, right? 
I'm going to have you tilt your camera up just slightly. How's that? Yeah. Good, good. Sort of, kind of. Yeah. Here now we can see it all. Excellent. Okay. So we've got the herbs. We've got the pistachios. Good. Right. Um, the garlic. Uh, and I don't know if, I, I think I always say this whenever I do any recipes with you guys and I use this, it's like, this thing is the best thing ever. If you don't have one, um, get one because it makes life so much easier for garlic. It makes life easier for ginger. It's just like, it's just so nice. You just feel like this, no chopping, no nothing. And then when you're done, like that, it's now it's in there, done. Um, rinse off my hand. Um, I'm gonna get a little of my lemon zest. Oh wait, I'm just rinsing that because I need it for the lemon, sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we're gonna do the lemon zest. And again, it's just like, you can just kind of go around. I'll do this here so you guys can see it a little better. And this is um, an ingredient that, you know, the proportions are kind of the main thing, but you can always kind of change them a little bit if you want more or less of something like incest, for example, um, or, you know, you, I wouldn't change so much the nuts, but if you really like a lot of garlic, put in two cloves. If you're really not a garlic fan, leave it out altogether. Like that doesn't need to be followed to the letter at all. It just sort of, uh, uh, Let's it's say. like what you like. What is that called? It's a micro. This is a micro plane. Okay. And Just actually, it used to be. Um, it it was um, used in like wood woodworking, and then oh. somebody at some point just sort of realized that it had this alternative um benefit of being able to be used for um for food. So it's like. People have been using these microplanes for a while, but they started out just being for, yeah, for woodworking. Crazy, right? Yeah. And then I'm just going to squeeze this up. For me, this, I'm just doing that much. That's going to be absolutely fine. A little bit of juice of a lemon. Mm -hmm. I, it just adds a little bit of brightness, I feel. And I'm going to hit it with a little bit of salt and pepper. And then I'm going to let it go. And then we're going to put the olive oil in. Right. And let's see, I am going to then when we do that, before we get to that point, I'm going to set it up. I'm going to put in it's a half a cup. Again, if you want it to be a little more or less, uh, you know, you can even start with a quarter cup. You might like what you get at that point. Maybe I'll start. Kind with of, is it kind of all about the thickness? The olive oil will make it thicker? The, the oil sort of will emulsify it. So what I might do is, you know, just start with this and see where we are. What's another kind of thing to sort of a teaching thing about pesto is it's one of those things that you can kind of see where you are. You don't have to, it's not like you're baking a cake and you've got to get it right and or else it's going to be a disaster in the oven. It's like you can kind of get it to a point and then say, so it's nice to take it slowly because you could say, oh yeah, I'm going to add a little more of this thing or, oh, I'd like it to be a little more you know, garlicky or a little more lemony or more oil is going to make it like more luscious. And I'm, I'm going to put that in. So you can, you can play with that. Um, okay. I have one question here is, are you worried about the seeds of the lemon heading in when you were squeezing it? You know what? I, I happened to see that there were no seeds in, in that section that I had. So I, whatever, usually if I'm, if I'm doing it, I use this, if I'm like said, you know what I mean? Cause then they all get and then they're, they're not going to go in there, but I cut it and I was like, oh, I don't even have to do anything. It's exactly like a clean. It's perfect. So there you go. Um, okay. So did a little salt. I'm going to do a little pepper. Sorry. I just did my pepper. This would also actually be really nice with like red pepper flakes. That's another mm -hmm. kind of heat that might be really good in this one. Um, if you like that kind of thing. Okay, now it's going to be loud. So here and we go. have you tilt your camera down again so we can see it kind of emulsify and see you see you soften it as you go. Okay, is this pretty good? You guys can see yes. it. Yes. Um, pulse it. And then I'm going to go with it. Yeah. 
the idea is just to kind of get it and excuse me while I grab a actually here to scrape it down. Um, the idea is just to kind of get it a little bit of, of the way and then start bringing your oil in and, and, and scraping down the sides. Oh my God, it smells so good already. Yeah, I can smell it from here. The mint, it's just like there's something about mint and springtime and that fresh, bright kind of almost, it's not grassy, but it's so yummy. Okay, now we're gonna go, I'm gonna put it just on, I'm gonna leave it in the on position, I'm gonna pour the oil in. Okay, so I can see where it is and I'm gonna show it to you guys. I'm thinking I could leave it at this. Like I, you don't have to keep going on the oil. You could kind of just stay put. So I'm kind of glad I didn't put it all. Um, and the nuts, now I'm gonna take a spoon and show you. It's easier than I, I take it out. Okay, so here's kind of where we're at, okay? Oh, beautiful. Right? And so you can see there's the nuts are somewhat, you know, little bits of nuts still. You yeah. can keep going and get this really, really smooth if you like kind of that more velvety texture. Um, you could, you know what? I am going to add a little more oil because I'm going to want that to balance with the um, with the cheese too. But you could also, um, at this point, just kind of taste a little bit to see where you are for the. Mm, that's actually really good. Okay, in terms of like how salted, how you are for salting, etc. I'm going to add a little more oil right from the bottle, and I'm going to let it go a little bit. No, it's loud, but also just to say, I have a good friend who has a blender who does like just the traditional pesto, and it's just it's like fluffy. It's almost like a mousse, so good. Which is I, you could tell do it in that. I was wondering that. Yeah. All right. I feel like at this point we are in a good place. I'm going to show you what it looks like. I'm going to take it out and put it in the bowl. See, kind of, sort of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to put it in a glass bowl. I'm going to stir in the cheese and then you'll see sort of really what the end result looks like. Right? It's moving the gear. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm just going to All right. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a really, here, I'm tilted down. You can see the green. My, it's, it's funny, my countertops are green. Shirts, it's just like, we're- Yeah, so much green, so much green. <laughs> well, and, and then, yeah, I was going to ask you, you know, I think like we have a favorite recipe that you actually turned us on to on the pesto, which was the pesto on the chicken and just baking, baking the- the chicken and then the pestos and a couple of little tomatoes on top of that and some parm on top of that, you know, like we, but what do you use this pesto for is like sort of you said well, the this, for sure. I would use it on the chicken too. Like I love basically doing anything with like chicken or like roasted proteins. Like that's kind of my go-to. I do a lot of the, you know, roasting, uh, I don't even know, like you could do, I do pork loin sometimes. Yeah, Rest, whatever it is. And then I like to have this kind of stuff as an accompaniment, but also sometimes I like to have it as like a, um, the thing you put on, like it's really nice with like, like a big, like chicken milanese kind of vibe. You know what I mean? If you're making like a nice big pounded piece of chicken with like maybe a little bit of breadcrumb or panko. And then this is just like on there. And all of these taste really nice. It doesn't only have to be 
the traditional, you know, Pesto Genovese kind of style. Yeah. Well, and Diane is saying she used it in an Easter egg dish. Um, oh, yes. yes, that is a that is actually a great idea. Eggs oh, are amazing. What did she do? Did she tell me? Tell me more. Tell, tell me us more. more. Tell us more, Diane. Your Easter egg dish. Okay, <clears throat> that's the dish that I made, um, where you make your eggs in a pan and yeah. a sheet pan. And then you roll the egg up, but you put in, I put in peppers and tomatoes and I put the pesto in it and then rolled it up. And it looked like a beautiful jelly roll with egg oh, and oh, wow. the pesto. And you can put anything else in it. And I, I sent pictures to the our group yep. when I made it. And it was just beautiful. And you sliced it and put it on the plate and it was all, it was gorgeous. That's such a great idea. Oh, I love that. And story. that pesto I did, I didn't use basil, I used parsley. Because um, yeah. it gave it a little bit of a bite, but, but then with the, the uh, olive oil, and I used a little bit of the roasted sesame oil as well. Ooh, yeah. which is really, which is great. Oh, and and thank you for saying that because there's another thing I wanted to show you guys. And Liz, what I wrote into the the um. The chat about the palmini, I thought she was talking about the Russian palmini. Ah. Because that's awesome if you know the palmini. And you can put pesto over that as well as when well, you eat it just plain. But those are good. So when you say palmini, I automatically thought of our dumplings. That's yeah. what you're that's, that's, that would actually be nice too. <laughs> like, Love but, it. But any of those things, like eggs is actually something that I, I, for whatever reason, just it just I blanked on that. I use these pestos with eggs all the time too. I make like sort of like a faux, like an omelet, but it doesn't always turn out like a perfect omelet, but you just sort of, you know, you make a little omelet for yourself or for, you know, like lunch for more people or dinner even. You just like run some of this down the middle and it's like, just so good. So here, I mean, I'm just gonna see you guys like this one. Yeah. Beautiful. It's just a very, um, you know, and the, I have to say like the pistachios and the, um, the mint is just so good. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's just amazing. Okay. So, and so I love the idea, you know, because we're at Target 100, we're all about formulas. And so it's really like herbs, a nut, some oil and a cheese. Yep, exactly. And, and I have, um, I think on the, on the little like um, accompanying yeah. list this, but it's kind of like here, like a really good rough idea is one or more if you love garlic clove of garlic so two cups of like tender greens or herbs and that could be like you know obviously basil but like cilantro parsley tarragon you could even use and this is another thing i wanted to tell you guys like people sometimes are very conscious about not wanting to have to throw away those beautiful carrot tops when you buy nice carrots yeah. for the fennel fronds i made one batch of this using the fennel fronds because i just felt like i can't just throw them all away and that's another thing like any sort of soft green could go in there you could even use a little firmer green like kale like you can totally people make kale pestos all the time too so okay. that's that's really a nice thing you could use baby spinach arugula anything the nuts whatever nuts you like you could toast them not toast them so so you've got like a clove of garlic two cups of packed greens of, of some kind in the case of that trapanese it's a pint of tomatoes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um about a quarter cup of nuts um, then the olive oil up to, you know, I, I used somewhere between a quarter and a, and a half cup, probably. Um, you pulse, you add the grated cheese to stir it in, and that's it. And you're done. I love it. So I now I just want to see all the creative Target 100 folks. So what we did for you guys uh, in Target 100 in the in the app is we actually constructed that so you can make your own because we love you to be creative. So put up your photos of your uh, of your personal pestos um, or try, you know, the one that we've tried here tonight um, so that and then use it as you will eggs pork loin we use the chicken it's just a little bit of baking of the chicken um and then you know layering that up uh and and letting it kind of seep in and it's delicious so oh and salmon um, i don't know if, if if people are salmon uh, oh yes i would totally that's another really great use because it's it's going in for a relatively short time so it still has like a lot of the the freshness of the pesto you're not really cooking it for a long amount of time um 
So it's that's another great use that I, I oh, do. Oh, and Kathy says as a sandwich spread. Oh my God, yes. On a good toasted like piece of bread with a turkey and some amazing arugula and some tomatoes. Like, right, pesto takes everything up a notch. It, it just, really does. It's just yeah. like all, everything's condensed. Like all these delicious things like are in one place and you just put a spoonful on and it's like, huzzah. Huzzah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So guys, now we have a template, right? We have a formula to make our own. Um, I love it. What about our amazing egg dish? I'm so excited about this because I, I love quiche. I live, live, live for quiche. And, and we're talking 100 and it's not like you can't have a crust, but I was like, could you give us a crustless version? So let's talk about it. Yes. And it's, it's such a great thing because it's like, Sometimes even, I mean, a, when you do a really good crust, like, okay, it's totally worth having it. But sometimes it's like the crust is like not that awesome, but you're just sort of eating it like, it's not to there, I'll just eat it. And it's like, you know what? I left my carbs in some other place today. And, and just, I like want the filling to be the star of the show. So that's that's the beauty of the of the crust is quiche, quiche in case anybody's, you know, not already on, you know, on board with the, with the awesomeness. But, um, but yes, so this, came into my mind because I was just thinking about something for brunch and I was thinking about how oh yeah like that everything bagel and lox and cream cheese like delicious breakfast brunch thing that people like to have like oh what if we made that into all those flavors into the quiche like and it becomes its own thing and you can make it like for brunch or you can make it for yourself so here's the one that I did I set one up ahead so you guys could see like a finished version. And I did this like in a, like an oval Le Creuset kind of thing. But when I had originally done it to test it, I just did it in a pie plate. So this is just like, you know, you could jazz it up if you want to make it a different shape, you could do whatever. Um, and, you know, this also, there's room for variation. The main formula to keep in mind that gives you this beautiful like silky texture that's not kind of stiff from too many eggs is this one and a half cup well in this case for a nine inch quantity nine inch pie pan quantity like one and a half cups of half and half to three eggs so you're sort of there's a ratio to that and i will read it to you because it's basically one part egg to two parts liquid dairy so you know essentially and then you're adding you know the the add-ons that are going to be in the quiche, but basically, yeah. So three eggs to one and a half cups of the half and half. That's really the the main thing. Um, and so, does it have to be half and half, or could it be full, whole milk, or it does it? Just, you said milk. liquid dairy. It, liquid dairy, like you and and for people who don't do dairy, I would even say you could try this. I did not myself try this, so I cannot say it's a it's a sure fire win. But I would think that there are options to do it with, you know, dairy free, you know, like, I don't know, like a soy, I don't know, it might be worth a try. That mm -hmm. would require a little bit of investigating. I can and then Diane is saying cottage cheese, maybe? You, you probably could, that's going to give you something a bit thicker, um, which might be really nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can really play around with the dairy if once it's sort of smoothed out. And that first part is basically, I'm just gonna take some stuff from here, is basically just putting together, grab some of this stuff. You're putting together that in, in this case, the half and half. I and I just like the way that that works. Yeah, I was gonna say that's sort of your preferred way. Cause I mean, I'm thinking about making this for Mother's Day. Um, you know, but I was talking back and forth with a couple of folks of like, I'm not a lox girl, but I think Canadian bacon in this would be a crazy amazing um protein other than the lox. So no. I kind of like, if you're recommending half and half, I got to do it your way. Yeah, no, the, it, that's like, that's, it's so nice to have and have something really good happens. And also I had mentioned some of these riffs and do not, you know, do not, uh, you know, underestimate the, the combination, the deliciousness, because like, there's sort of like that French onion soup with that kind of concept with all deeply caramelized onions and Gouda or Gruyere, whatever you're kind of in the mood for. You could do like the spanakopita idea, the spinach, the dill, the feta, also delicious. Carbonara, you could do it with like Canadian bacon or pancetta or whatever, like, you know, that. And then like a lot of black pepper and pecorino. So it's like another one of these things that's like a blank template that you can kind of do your thing. 
That's um, what I love so much about this. You're giving us a formula to make these dishes, right? And there's nothing. It's sort of like when you do make your own pizza night at our house. We just put out all these like toppings and everyone comes up with like, I was thinking goat cheese and tomato, you know, yeah. you know, you could do anything as long as you've got this amazing base that you're teaching us. Like, yeah, it, exactly right. Like I was even thinking it'd be really beautiful to do like goat cheese and asparagus and some tarragon, like that kind of thing could be really good. Mm -hmm. um, so I realized that I, I moved my eggs back to the bowl because I wanted to first put the, the milk, the half and half in so I could measure properly. Down to eye level, really see. So there's that over here. My three eggs are going now. Uh, um, I love this. It's like, would you like some eggs with your quiche? <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> <What's happening? I'm, laughs> so, you know, like in defense of the hilarity of that, I, I tried this. I really was playing with this for a while and my gut instinct was way more eggs and way less cream. Yeah. And when I made it, it came, the texture came out to be more like a frittata, which is a great thing too. But I was trying to get that like silky satiny quiche thing. And I kept on trying to like insist on it being more eggs and less cream. And then finally I was just, you know, I was doing the research and I was reading and like, there's just no getting away from it. If you, if you want this texture, it has to be this. And I didn't even trust that it was going to set up properly. Yeah. But I, I'm, 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 that's why I'm so impressed with the, uh, with the ratio and, and I do love that we're target 100 and, you know, half and half is fully acceptable here and delicious and low in carbs. So no problem. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Um, so, okay. I'm going to just do a little bit of salt, pepper, and then I'm going to whisk. Okay. I mean, I actually had a measured amount, but I'm just doing five. Doing it by an eyeball. Okay. So we're just gonna do this now. And then the fun part is kind of, you know, you're not really layering exactly because these ingredients are just kind of going into the pan. But if you just threw them all in in one big blob, your bite wouldn't necessarily have a little bit of tomato and a little bit of capers and a little bit of lox. Like, so there's a there's a little bit of a there's a, not even a little bit, there's a lot of a reward for just being a little bit careful about how you lay it out in the pan. It actually matters to your final result. Um, so that's interesting. So you're going to, I mean, you're going to show us this, but it sounds like you're going to lay in the foundation and then add the topping. So my <laughs> my messy Marvin would be like to stir them all in there. Stir it all in. No, actually this, I'm doing, I'm doing what you said, but I'm doing it in the opposite order. So oh, and I already greased this pan just a little, just with just some olive oil butter stuff. So what I'm really gonna do is I'm gonna first put the uh, the other ingredients primarily here. We're gonna have tomatoes and lox, whoops, and cream cheese and capers, and they're all coming into the hopefully somewhat into the view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good view. Um, and we're just going to like put them in, in a way that kind of layers them a little bit and then okay. just pour, pour the liquid on top. And then that way you kind of have them all distributed well. So, right. so that's that. Um, okay. So I'm getting all of my things. I impressed all of my family on mother's day with this. It's a really nice thing. Yeah. I totally, I, I couldn't recommend it more. It's, it's great. Um, don't, you love, don't you love that I'm cooking on Mother's Day? I was kind of wondering that. I'm like, how? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. But well, I always you have everyone. <laughs> well, presumably, once, you're, once you get roped into hosting, then that's it. You're like, well, I'm I know. Well. well, and then my mother in law comes. So I'm really just cooking for her as a mother. You're really cooking for your mother. Oh, so it's her. Okay, so I yeah. see. What, yeah. I see how this is going. Yeah. And I prefer to be in my own home instead of being at a place where you're like fighting crowds and all the rest of it. So we have a lot of fun. That is good. And it is fun. And it's nice because I do feel like you, you know, on those kind of holidays, especially the food sometimes isn't like, they're not really, eh, I, yeah. sometimes it's great, but you know, I don't know. Like, and you know, you can make something really good. So you're like, yeah, why? that's it. I like my food better than most foods. So it's good. 
<laughs> I so love it. one of the things I just wanted to say is in the recipe, um, I did say that the tomatoes, I suggested plum tomatoes, and I just want to say why, because I think it's an important uh, component. If you want to put tomatoes and you're not cooking them down, um, they can't be full of seeds and, and like moisture and wetness. They have to be as dry as possible. So the plum tomato is already your best bet. And then to take it one step further, I say to scoop the seeds out. It might look like, how are you going to do that? But actually, believe it or not, I'm going to find a place to put this and I'm going to show you. If all you have to do is just kind of put your finger into these like little sections, right? And the seeds are in there and just put your, whoops. Put your finger in and the seeds just come out and that's it, right? Oh my God. Up. And it really makes a difference because it's a much drier um, tomato in your in your recipe. So it really helps. I did it for all the ones before, but so that's all. I just wanted you guys another to see. Another great tip, another magical tip from Lisa. Really good tip. And then slice away, even on sandwiches. Like it just, if you want does. a nice juicy tomato for like a BLT or whatever, then yes, okay, whatever you want it to be. But if you need it to not give out a lot of moisture, this is how. Okay, so I'm gonna do some layering. And you can just sort of watch the watch the fun. The magic. Right, uh, whatever it is. So this is the, I'm, you know, the amounts here I measured already ahead of time, but it's the capers. I'm just sort of putting a few on the bottom and the tomatoes. It's just scattering across the bottom a little bit. And again, it's not really gonna be layered per se, but it's just gonna be about distribution um, in the end. And I'm gonna do the, the cream cheese. So the cream cheese, ideally, you would want it to be right out of the fridge when you do this cubing so that you're kind of, it's still nice and firm. We're kind of maximizing that. Um, but, it's fine. You can also just pinch it off and plop it around, but you want it to be in little cubes so that you'll actually get the experience of a little bit of cream cheese with the, the locks, you know, like it doesn't just dissolve into everything else. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. You'd get a nice bite of it. That's good. Yeah, it's sort of there. It's just like, it's, it's kind of melted into the quiche, but not entirely. So it's, it's a nice little thing. Um, so I'm just going to kind of keep going and oh, more tomato, maybe up to that. And I did a bunch of chives, which I, in the recipe, talk about using just at the end as kind of a, a garnish before you serve it. But if you want, you could throw some in. It's okay. Likewise with the onions, but I think that's better just on top. Nothing. All right. Okay. And this is just like a four ounces of cream cheese. Amazing. It might look bigger than they are, but it's like I hope, I hope your family's ready to eat quiche for days. Oh, I know. Well, my daughters are coming home for a little visit. I was mentioning this to you earlier. And so they're gonna be super psyched. They're gonna be like, oh, you made this for me. Gonna be like, oh, <laughs> I made this for you, honeys. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see. So they're they're gonna be wow, so look at this. Oh my god, it's so full of deliciousness. Right. So you see what I mean? It's not exactly layered, but you know, no, but it, I see what you mean now. You're you're gonna get a little bit of everything in every bite now, and it's gonna really yeah. get that flavor going. Gives it a little more, I don't know, a little something. So then we're just gonna just pour this right on like that. And you can, if you want, then I sometimes like to do kind of just move everybody around a little, like if you want some, some of this. Now, if you want the onions, so then I have, I can't really see them, but I have these. Oh, things. beautiful. So then these guys kind of go right on top. Okay. And again, just as much or as little as you want. If you don't like onions, just don't even bother. So totally fine. And then the everything bagel seasoning to make it like you're having the bagel in. And this can just be however much go for it. OMG, this is so great. Right? And then it's going to go in the oven and it's going to go in at 350. Um and I think that 
I started at 350. I wrote this in the recipe. I, I leave it there for like 10 minutes and then I lower it down to 340. I don't, I just feel like sometimes like you don't want it to break and get like weird and lowering it just a little. I feel I've, I've made a bunch of these to sort of get, get what I wanted and that helped. Um, so I recommended it in the recipe that you go down to 340 and then you do, you, so 10 minutes to 350 and then around 25 or 35. Um, and then that's it. And you take it out. And you have this guy. Oh, oh my God. It's beautiful. Beautiful. And then at that point, once it's out, then you could just scatter some, um, you know, some chives and, and that's it. It's like you're having a yummy breakfast. Meal, but it's, it's so it. delicious. I cannot wait for this. I'm so excited about this. And, and the fact that you've given us this template now, really honestly, a template to work with, right. And a formula, right. Three eggs to this and then make it up on your own and get creative. Um, all the little tips and tricks that you gave us here tonight, the, even the, the baking tip, right. I would have almost guessed that you'd actually broiled that at the end just for a second, but cause it looks so well caramelized, but it's just baking. Just baked. And, and also you get like the, you know, the, the tell that you're really done is you get that nice golden edge and a little bit of color on top. And it's just like, even if it's still a little bit jiggly, you're, you're okay. Like once you get to that point of the nice dark ring of, you know, caramelization around the, around the edge, you're good. So Amazing. yeah. Amazing. Oh my gosh, Lisa, what a beautiful couple of things for us to take forward and use and, and make, right. Cause that's the key to life is like, and the key to sustainable weight loss to me is like, that you're eating things that you love, that when you eat them, right? Like we talked about that sandwich, Kathy talking about this, putting it on a sandwich. It's like, this isn't just a turkey sandwich and it's delicious and it works and it makes me feel like I didn't just have another turkey sandwich. It's so important for our long-term success. So agree. And I also feel like it just makes it like you don't, like you feel like you're you're eating something new and special. Like you're not, it's like not, it's not reducing your possibilities. It's like you're expanding them because you're having new things that are enhancing, you know, the way that you eat that you didn't necessarily eat before if you, if you were not eating this way. So to me, it's like just expanding your options in a way that makes it more delicious. So I don't, I'm, I'm very, I'm totally into it. I love it. I love it. And, and Kathy just gave us another great tip to use them on sheet pan roasted veggies. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank Toss you. Toss that, right? Toss them right yeah. on there. Delicious. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And so. even like when it comes, like we talked about this before too, like when it comes out of the oven, like you put it on when it goes in, but you can also that right out of the oven, like with when it's real hot, it goes, you know, yeah. It's, it's yeah. I love that. I love that. Well, so we have some good spring, spring ideas, right. That we can take forward and like all things target 100, make it your own, share it with us. If you're going to do it, like show us what you're doing, because we want to know what you're doing and how it turned out. Um, anyone have any questions for Lisa particularly? Yes, Amy. Hi, Liz. Hi, Lisa. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to try this. Um, my question is regarding um, if you were to add spinach to the quiche, what would be your recommendation on the best way to do it? Could you do it raw or cooked? I always find when I add spinach to like an egg dish, it kind of lumps up, right. you know, and kind of clumps in like, and so I wondered like, what would your recommendation be? I didn't know like um, what you taught us about layering and putting the stuff in first, Right. It seems like that would help, but how would you handle spinach? <laughs> you could totally do that. You could totally do that same thing, but with spinach, you would want to cook it. Like with any vegetables, like broccoli, spinach, stuff like that, you're going to need to cook it first. Um, okay. And with spinach in particular, cook it and really squeeze out as much liquid as possible. But then once you've kind of got the dry kind of spinach, whether you use baby spinach in the microwave or you've got frozen spinach and, you know, squeeze that up, then like scatter, use your fingers to really open it up and loosen it and put it in the, in the pie plate first with whatever other things, the cheeses and things that you might put in. And that'll kind of, you know, like allow it. Cause otherwise, yeah, it, it gets really clumpy. If you're okay. Right. okay. All right. Thank you so much for the recommendation. I, I, I love spinach and put it in a lot of things. Me so too, we'll support me too. Yeah. yeah. And the baby spinach, like I'll put it in sometimes just, you know, microwave it for a minute or so. And it's, there it is. And you just kind of, you know, right into the pan. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm super excited. Thank you. Yay.
What else? Any other questions or comments or things you want to share? Louise? Well, uh, I must say, this is wonderful. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to know, do you use only three eggs at a, for this quiche? Do. And that serves how many people, the one you showed us? You know, it's it's a nine inch pie plate. So it really depends. Like you could either really, you know, you, you could certainly get six people um, if you're having it maybe with, with salads and with something else. And, and again, there's no crust. So I feel like you could, you know, also just cut it in four and have it be like a very substantial main course with a little bit of salad. Probably you could do that too. Um, you could also just put it out as part of like a, you know, spread and just people could take slices and have it with some other things that might be, you know, on the table. I keep thinking about salads. I don't know why my brain's just like going to that place. But, um, but yeah, it, sometimes I think it just makes a nice thing on its own too. You know, you and I did a, a whole thing on making boards one time on, right? Like, and I was thinking about like, would be fun to put it in skinny little slices on. We did these beautiful boards, right? Where we did salamis and cheeses and nuts and veggies and um, putting it on a board, but then having like roasted little mini potatoes and like things that people could chew yeah. and make a little, you know, like I got all inspired there thinking about That's that. That's a very cool idea. I really like that. And then if you were to do it that way, you might even do it in a different shape pan if you were like so inclined like a rectangular thing and you could really cut it like that um yeah. and also with that like i was just imagining like oh my god i'm totally like into this idea now but getting it out of the pan without trouble i want to just make one more uh, the comments are so awesome breakfast charcuterie yes <laughs> bring it in mini muffin pans yeah, yeah. you cook it for you it could. You right. just, the only thing is you, you would have to experiment a bit with the cook time because it would be much less obviously. And so just keep an eye on it. I would say like, you know, just shave it way down um, and, you know, keep it. Lock. I like that mini muffin idea though, quite a bit. That's and super fun. It's a super fun. But anyway, just these little offset spatulas, you guys, like to lift things out instead of, um, I just want you to see how thin they are. Like if, if you make this and you want to cut slices and set them on something, these are just helpful tools to have. Very. Um, Pam has her hand. I'd love to hear. Pam, you got a question or a comment? Yeah, I just walked in the door in the door from work. I was just wondering if there's a recording of this so I could see the whole thing. Absolutely. And it'll be up on uh, the walls and we'll make sure that you guys get it. Uh, those of you who are in our current classes right now, this is one of our subscribers. <laughs> now you know what our subscription is like. We have a lot of fun. We do cooking classes. Okay exercise okay. classes. We do all the things back here. So this we okay. will make sure goes on your wall as well so that you can, and we'll make sure you get the recipes. Okay. okay perfect. Thank, thank you. Yes. Our, our Sylvia designs our recipes. And so they're beautifully laid out for you guys. And oh, everything great. that Lisa has told you here tonight, all of her tips and tricks are even there on the recipes themselves. So. You oh, okay. Great. Yeah. I'm so glad you got in though, for even for a couple and of I minutes. And and I love quiches. That's why I wanted to get here. I hurried okay. home so I could at least catch the tail end. Yay. Well, you've got a good one. You've got a really good one here. Cool. Good. What else? Yes, Diane. Are you are you leaving us? I'm, for just, the I'm just wondering where y'all live because um I could be there in four or five short hours. <laughs> <I'd have time. laughs> it looks beautiful. And yeah. I mean, I use quiche all the time because my grandchildren won't eat vegetables or things. But if I put them in the quiche, we get them to eat and they love breakfast sausage in there. So I brown yes. it up. But that is a great place to hide things for people that you want to eat healthier. And yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much. What a great class. So oh, yeah. fun, right? Good, good. Anything else, guys, that you want to share, you want to ask? Yeah, Louise. I'm sorry, again. Yeah. Um, if I wanted to use, instead of one and a half cups of half and half, can you recommend again uh, some other alternatives? Yeah, I mean, you could if you're trying to go with a lower fat option. If that's kind of where you're where you're trying to take it, you could just do whole milk. Um, whole milk I, would work. I think it would work. I do. I I in I, I was doing a lot of researching, and a lot of people say that whole milk will will work just fine. I how about mixing it half and half with the absolutely the half and half and half and, and, half, whole and milk. half milk? Yeah, I think you yeah. totally. Could quarters of a cup of each you'd probably be okay yeah I think I'm trying to think you put a little bit of, of the um cornstarch in it it'll it, it's makes it thicker 
Oh. Yeah, that, you could do that. You could like just liquefy a little bit in a little bit. Yeah. Of, yeah. It'll, yeah, it'll it'll make it thicker, like the half and half. And I like Diane's idea of putting cottage cheese in it too. Like that's yeah. another idea to thicken it a little. If you used whole milk, maybe that would give you a little thickening as yeah. well. The texture good... with the cottage cheese is fabulous. It really makes it very smooth. Oh. But I blend that really well first. Blending, yep. That's important. Yeah. Yeah, the texture thing, I, it's, you know, this one, this particular proportion is a that, that very kind of like soft satiny kind of texture. Mm. That's what do. Nice. Good, good. Yeah. All right. Well, you are our uh, amazing rock star. We're so lucky that you come and spend <laughs> time and develop these gorgeous recipes for us. Um, thank you for everything. And uh, we can't wait to have you back. And I'll send you all the photos of these beautiful quiches and pestos that come my way, because uh, I know I'll get some photos. So I would love, love to see them. And I will also share the specifics on that, that pesto trapanese that I I showed right. you guys. I didn't include a recipe for, but it was kind of a, a last minute thought yesterday. I was like, oh, anyway. So yes. And, and thank you for having me. The, really, I just love doing this. I loved getting to talk to you guys. And I love sharing enthusiasm about food and cooking and seasonal things with people who are excited to do it too. And it's just, it's great. So well, you make it so easy. And that is the most important thing, like, is that we can, we can make this simple. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. It doesn't have to be something that you spend the whole day doing, right? You all saw how simple these things were. Um, so let's keep it simple and keep eating delicious food and beautiful food uh, as we, as we reach our goals. So thank you guys. What a fun. Thank scene. you. Have a beautiful one. All it's right. Fun. Wonderful. Thank you. Take care. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Go have some dinner, Louise. <laughs> it's early. It's only five o'clock. It is early for you. Ah, right. For you. That's right. That's right. Oh, Bye. Thank you. you. Bye bye.